Sometimes bigger really is better. I'm Dave Stewart. I'm an engineering manager at Intel, part of our open source technology center, working to make a Xeon, the Intel Xeon processor, the best choice if you pick Solaris or Open Solaris. And you know, some of the biggest computers are on, on the planet are, are running Solaris today. Uh, and why that? Well, you know, there's some big problems that are just very difficult to solve unless you have a big system. And so, um, with that in mind, think about the Intel Xeon processor. And what we really want to do is make it the best choice for if you choose Solaris or Open Solaris. So, are there some fundamental things that we can do in the processor and the architecture of the system to make it sure that you can build, you know, these bigger systems? Well, the good thing is that there are. And so, I want to talk about that. But I got to go back, back to the 80s, back to the days of you know, leg warmers and, uh, you know, back to the future, right? You know, think about it back in those days, the original IBM PC architecture had something called the PIC or the Programmable Interrupt Controller. And, you know, we use that as a programmer to, you know, enable interrupts, disable interrupts, mask them, etc. Well, that architecture has evolved over the past, you know, I guess 30 years or so plus. And now we're looking at a, a, a situation where you've got a um, advanced PIC or APIC, and this is used uh, primarily in multiprocessor systems where if you've got a processor that wants to talk to another processor, wants to send a message between them, this uh, APIC is used for that. And so uh, if you think about that message passing, that could very well be a fundamental limitation on how many processors you can put in the system. And so uh, we've put some focus on that and, uh, and in enabling it in Solaris. And so I'd like to tell you a little bit about that. And this is a feature that we refer to um, as the extended, extended APIC, or X2 APIC, you'll see it referred to. And it's a feature that's a part of our overall core microarchitecture, uh, referred to, uh, some of you may know about it as Nehalem. And so this is a way to actually uh, get some very uh, interesting limitations taken off with this new architecture. So in this case, you know, think about it. You've got processors that have multiple cores in them. Each of those, you know, think they're an independent processor in a multiprocessor system. Now, there are various times that these guys want to really actually go and send a message to another you know, core or another processor in the system somewhere, right? I mean, it may be things like, hey, you're idle. You need to wake up and start running. Or, um, hey, you're running a, a lower priority thread. I want you to go back into the scheduler and uh, pick a higher priority thread to start running. Or it might be some sort of a broadcast message to say, uh, you know, where uh, I'm, I'm doing a context switch, you ought to flush out all of your uh, translation look aside buffer uh, entries and things like that. So um, that's something that uh, is very important. So the limitation, again, of how many of these wires you can connect to each other, um, it could be a fundamental limitation in building big systems. And so actually, the previous architecture, or the XA pick, uh, is one that uh, has a limitation of, I think, 256 processors. Now, you might think that's a pretty big limitation, but in fact, uh, I've actually seen some prototype chips that have two, 256 processors on them, and you put multiple of those in the system. You can imagine how this is a fundamental architectural limitation uh, unless you put in a bunch of glue chips, and that's just, you know, sort of slows things down. So is there something fundamental in the CPU architecture we could add to, to deal with this? And in fact, that's where this X2 APIC comes in, and the limitation uh, here is much higher. Instead of 256 processors, it's actually uh, 4 billion processors, actually uh, 4 billion minus 1, so, because it's, you've got 32 bits of addressability for processors here, and so uh, that's a lot of processors. You could probably uh, use that and not hit that limitation for a long time. So that's very nice. Uh, what else have we done here? Well, also there's some great features in the X2 APIC to, um, you know, if you're doing I.O. to uh, have fewer I.O. messages that need to be uh, broadcast, and so you're taking down some of that traffic. So there are a lot of good, you know, features within the X2 APIC. And our enabling in Solaris lets you, and Open Solaris lets you build a system and um, either activate this mode or keep it in the, uh, the X APIC mode, which is a sort of a compatibility mode. So that's, that's very cool. Uh, what else for building big systems? Well, if you think about it, there's uh, other things that we could do. In fact, uh, I'm aware of other community projects to actually extend the use of interrupt descriptor tables uh, or IDTs. Um, there are some other uh, projects that are going on to truly try and make sure that there are any fundamental limitations to building a, a big system that's a, that's a balanced system that not only has lots of processors but plenty of I.O., memory, et cetera. 
Um, so uh, it was very exciting to me because I think uh, sometimes you just really need a big system and so because there's some big problems out there to solve. So join us at opensolaris.org at the Intel Platform Project. Um, see how we've done this implementation for the X2 APIC and uh, help us overall uh, overcome some of these barriers and limitations to building some phenomenal big systems to solve the big problems out there.